continue simulating our press fit bushing from a previous video. There's a few things that I don't like about it. One of them is we have some inconsistency in the stress and also the stress value is very high. So let's see if we can improve on both of those. We'll begin by going to the CAD part where we'll reduce the interference between the bushing and the link. We'll do that with the synchronous modeling radial dimension. Here I'll use Quick Pick to get the ID of the hole in the link. And what we'll do is we'll make that larger by a thousandth of an inch on the radius. And we'll do the same thing to the OD of the bushing. And since it's only going for radial faces, we can get the first face on the quick pick. And we'll make that smaller by a thousandth as well. So now our total interference on the radius is one thousandth of an inch. Next we can go to the FEM and update our meshes to conform to our new interference fit. Alright, next let's check the materials for our link and our bushing. So here we'll get information on our link mesh. And we were inheriting materials. Here you can see that steel has been inherited for the link. That's incorrect. That should be aluminum. And sure enough, aluminum has been assigned to our bushing. That should be steel. So let's go ahead and swap that. We'll do that right here in the FEM by editing our collector and we'll assign a material of aluminum to all of the meshes that are in this collector. And then we'll create a new collector for our steel. Here I'll call that 310 and we'll drag the bushing mesh into it and that will assign the material of steel to the bushing and aluminum for the meshes in the aluminum collector. All right, next we're going to parameterize our mesh size. So we'll create a new parameter, MS, and we'll set it to 10 thousandths of an inch. And then we'll assign that parameter to all of our meshes for the mesh size. Here we can do all three at the same time. And we'll point it to our expression MS. All right, so that forces a mesh update. To test the associativity of our new MS expression to our mesh size, let's go ahead and make a change to MS and make it 15 thousandths. Here we need to be in the formula column in order to edit it. All right, and there, right away you can see there's a mesh update pending. Go ahead and say update and there you can see the larger mesh size. All right, let's undo that because we like the finer mesh and we'll undo the change to the expression. Next, what we'll do to match the meshes between the bushing and the hole in the link is we're going to make an expression from the perimeter of our hole. So here, if we have selected create parameter in our measure dialog, then we can create a parameter for our length. We don't need ones for the radius, arc center, curve start, and, and min radius of curvature, so I'll turn those off. But here, if we go to the expression dialog, after hitting OK to our measure, you can see that we now have a measurement for our perimeter around the hole. We're going to use that in specifying a mesh control 
in our FEM, which will control the number of elements around the perimeter of our bushing and around the ID of our hole. So first we need to get that measurement parameter into our FEM. We can't create associative measurement parameters in the FEM, so I created it in the I part, and then we can link to it with an inner part expression into the FEM. So here you can see our inner part expression for our measurement. I'll call that perim so that we can identify it more easily later. And we're going to use that in defining a new expression, which will be the number of elements, NE, around our OD of our bushing and the ID of our hole. And we'll do that with an integer command, which we don't have an INT in the expression subsystem. And here I'll drop a link into the description of the video where you can see all of these. But we do have one that's called TRNC for truncate, which I'll use to get the integer portion of the perimeter divided by our mesh size. And here if I hit the Enter key, you can see we've got 72 now for around the perimeter. That needs to be unitless for the number of elements around our perimeter. So we'll make sure we get the dimensionality correct there in our expression editor. So the first mesh control we'll create with that new parameter will be on our bushing, where we'll create a number of elements around an edge. And we'll tie that to our formula, NE. And we'll select our edge of our bushing. There you can see we have a mesh update pending. We'll update that in just a moment. But first, we'll make another mesh control on our source face for our brick mesh on our link. And it's important to do that on our source face, otherwise we may have issues with the mesh update. So here earlier in the previous video, we had used two source faces here on our link. And we'll create a mapped hole mesh control where our layer depth will be two times our mesh size, and we want two layers. And then we'll specify our spacing by our number of elements on our edge. We'll select our edge and say OK, and now we're ready to update our meshes. Let's go ahead and turn on our geometry and our meshes. And now we'll see after the mesh updates that we have the same number of elements going around the perimeter in our hole as we do on our bushing. All right, so that should help increase the accuracy and reduce the irregularity in our stress results. So here we'll go ahead and solve. I'll pause the video, but we can watch the time step convergence here. And the total time was about a minute and a half for the solve. All right, so let's take a look at our results. Displacement results still look consistent. No irregularities there. Next, we'll look at our stress results. Here we can see that the maximum stress has been reduced by our CAD and material changes. However, we still have irregular stress results. Now, this can sometimes be due to inaccuracies with the node placement on our polygon geometry. We can check on the accuracy of the node placement on our polygon geometry by going to the FEM and selecting Adjust Node Proximity to CAD. Here we'll check all of the nodes that are displayed. And let's go to an unshaded view. 
we can see all of the nodes that need to be adjusted are in that same area where we were seeing some discontinuities in the stress. So here I'll select a tolerance of 1e minus 5 and we can list the nodes. This will show us the deviation of the nodes to the CAD geometry and we can select how close we want those nodes to be to the geometry with our tolerance. So here I'll keep that at 1e minus 5 and that adjusts the nodes and locks the meshes. Now we're ready to solve again. Here I'll pause the video and we can see in a little over a minute we've got updated results. And let's take a look at our stress results and here we can see that we've eliminated our discontinuity in our stress in that location. So that was just due to the inaccuracies of the node placement and the high degree of accuracy required for accurate stress results. Thank you.